The saga continues with Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. The narrative of the patriarchs. Introduction from Abraham to his descendants. The narrative of the patriarchs encompassing the lives of Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph represents a significant phase in the biblical story. Following the foundational saga of Abraham, these narratives delve into the complexities of his descendants' lives, illustrating how the divine promises of land, kingdom, and blessing are transferred, tested, and fulfilled through generation. Isaac, the Quiet Continuer Isaac, the long-awaited son of Abraham and Sarah, represents the direct continuity of the Abrahamic covenant. His story, though less dramatic than that of Abraham or Jacob, is pivotal. Isaac's life is marked by quieter faithfulness and less turbulent, yet significant episodes. His experiences, such as the digging of his father's wells and his own encounters with God, reinforce the covenantal promises. Isaac's role in the patriarchal narrative is essential in maintaining the lineage through which the promises are to be fulfilled. Jacob, a complex transformation. Jacob's story is one of complexity and transformation. Known for his early deceptive actions, such as the tricking of his brother Esau out of his birthright and blessing, Jacob undergoes a profound journey of change. His experiences, including his dream at Bethel and his wrestling with God at Peniel, signify a transformation in his character and relationship with God. Jacob's life is characterized by struggle, both internal and external, which ultimately lead to his emergence as Israel, the father of the twelve tribes. Joseph from Slavery to Sovereignty The narrative of Joseph is one of intrigue, betrayal, and redemption. Sold into slavery by his brothers, Joseph's journey takes him from the depth of prison to the height of Egyptian power. His story is powerful illustration of divine providence and forgiveness. Joseph's ability to interpret dream, his rise to prominence in Egypt, and his ultimate reconciliation with his brothers demonstrate how God's plan can prevail even through human treachery and suffering. The Transfer and Transformation of Blessings Throughout this patriarchal narrative, the key theme is the transfer and transformation of divine blessings and promises. Each patriarch experiences unique challenges and triumph, but all contribute to the unfolding of God's covenantal plan. Their stories reflect the dynamic nature of God's relationship with His chosen people, where faith, struggle, and grace intertwine. Conclusion, the legacy of the patriarchs. The narratives of Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph are not just historical accounts of individual lives. They are integral part of the larger story of God's dealing with humanity. They exemplify how faith is passed down and reshaped through the generations and how divine promises are fulfilled in often unexpected ways. The legacy of the patriarch is a testament to the ensuring faithfulness of God and intricate ways in which he works through human history. Jacob and Esau, the struggle for birthright and blessing. Genesis 25, 29-34 Introduction The Dynamics of Birthright in Ancient Time The narrative of Jacob and Esau in Genesis 25 is a crucial text for understanding the concepts of birthright and blessing in the ancient world. These themes are central to the patriarchal narrative and have significant implication for the unfolding of the biblical story. The Significance of Birthright in ancient cultures, the birthright held immense importance, especially for the firstborn son. It was more than a mere privilege. It was a legal right that conferred leadership, responsibility, and double portion of an inheritance. The firstborn was typically seen as a continuation of the father's lineage and legacy. In the context of the patriarchal narrative, the birthright also has spiritual and covenantal dimensions as it entails the transmission of God's promises to the next generation. Esau's disregard for his birthright Esau's attitude towards his birthright is a central element of his narrative. His decision to trade his birthright for a bowl of stew is a pivotal moment showcasing his disregard for the spiritual and familiar responsibilities it entailed. 
This act is not just a moment of weakness or hunger. It symbolizes Iso's overall attitude towards his inheritance and responsibilities. In the cultural and religious context of the time, Iso's actions are seen as profane and short-sighted. The cultural and religious implications of Iso's actions. Esau's decision to sell his birthright and his marriage to a Canaanite woman are viewed as acts of profanity in the biblical narrative. These actions indicate a lack of respect for the family's spiritual heritage and covenantal relationship with God. Esau's choice reflects a departure from the values and expectations of his lineage, further complicating the family dynamics and the fulfillment of the divine promise. Jacob's role in the struggle for blessing. Jacob's role in this story is also complex. While he is seen taking advantage of Esau's disregard for the birthright, Jacob's desire for the birthright reflects an understanding of its significance. This narrative sets the stage for the latter events in which Jacob obtains not only the birthright, but also the blessing from their father, Isaac. The struggle between the brothers over these rights and blessings is a recurring theme and is reflective of deeper issues of identity, destiny, and God's providential plan. Conclusion Understanding the Birthright and Blessing Narrative The story of Jacob and Esau's struggle over the birthright and blessing is more than a family dispute. It is a narrative that sheds life on the values and customs of the time. It highlights the significance of birthright in the ancient context and its spiritual implication within Abrahamic covenant. This narrative invites reflection on the themes of responsibility, spiritual heritage, and the complexities of divine providence in human relationships and decisions. The Power of Blessing in Hebrew Tradition Introduction Spiritual Essence of Blessing In Hebrew tradition, the concept of blessing extends beyond mere words or formal wishes. Blessings are deeply spiritual and imbued with the power that is believed to impact the physical, material, and spiritual dimensions of life. This segment explores this profound significance and efficacious power of blessing in the biblical context. Blessing versus birthright, a distinct concept. While the birthright primarily entails physical and material inheritance, the blessing carries a more spiritual and relational connotation. The birthright is a legal entitlement, but the blessing is spiritual endowment. It is essential to understand this distinction to appreciate the depth and impact of blessings in the Hebrew tradition. The efficacious nature of blessing. In the biblical narrative, blessings were considered to carry real, tangible power. This power was not just symbolic. It was believed of the ability to influence and shape the course of events. Blessings could bring prosperity, vitality, fertility, and success. They were seen as a conduct through which divine favor and grace were bestowed upon individuals and families. The Dynamic Journey of Blessing Blessings in Hebrew culture were not static. They were dynamic. It was believed that the blessings traversed the world, gathering goodness, strength, and favor, and then returning this to the one who bestowed or received the blessing. This concept underscores the living and active nature of blessing, seen as almost having a life of their own, capable of influencing and transforming realities. The Role of Blessings in Covenantal Relationship in the context of the patriarchal narratives, blessings play a crucial role in covenantal relationships. They are a means through which God's promises and favor are transmitted from one generation to another. The blessings given by patriarchs like Isaac and Jacob were not mere wishes for the future. They were powerful pronouncements to shape the destiny of their recipients. Conclusion The Transformative Power of Blessing the power of blessing in Hebrew tradition is a testament to the belief in the active involvement of the divine in human affairs. The blessings are a critical element of understanding the relationship between God and His people, encapsulating hope, promises, and divine favor. They are seen as transformative, carrying the potential to impact not just individuals, but entire nations and generations. 
Rebecca's role in securing Jacob's blessing. Introduction, a pivotal moment in the patriarchal narrative. The narrative of Rebecca's involvement in securing Jacob's blessing from Isaac in Genesis is a complex and dramatic episode that significantly impacts the patriarchal lineage. This event illustrates the intricate interplay between the family dynamics, cultural values, and divine providence. Rebecca's awareness and decision. Rebecca's role in the blessing of Jacob begins with her awareness of Esau's indifferent attitude towards his birthright. Understanding the importance of the patriarchal blessing and the continuation of Abraham's covenant, Rebecca takes a decisive, albeit controversial step. He orchestrates a plan for Jacob to deceive his father Isaac and re receive the blessings intended for Esau, the firstborn. The act of deception is implication. Rebecca instructs Jacob to disguise himself as Esau and prepare food for Isaac, exploiting Isaac's blindness. This act of deception is fraught with moral and ethical dilemmas. While it ensures Jacob receiving the blessing, it also involves deceit and manipulation within the family. This episode raises questions about the means used to fulfill divine purposes and the role of human agency in unfolding of God's plan. The Cultural Context and Enmity Dynamics The cultural context of the time plays significant emphasis on the patriarchal blessing. It was not merely a father's wish for his son's future, but a spiritual and covenantal pronouncement. Rebecca's actions reflect the weight of this cultural value. Additionally, the dynamics within Isaac's family, including Rebecca's favoritism toward Jacob and the prophecy she received about the son's future, contribute to her decision to intervene in the blessing process. The Consequences and Divine Providence The immediate consequence of Rebecca's action is the transfer of Isaac's blessing to Jacob, which includes promise of land, numerous descendants, and dominion. However, this act sets off a chain of events affecting Jacob's future, leading to his flight from Esau's anger and his transformative experience away from home. Despite the morally ambiguous nature of Rebecca's action, the narrative suggests divine providence at work, aligning human actions with the fulfillment of God's promises. Conclusion Rebecca's Complex Legacy Rebecca's role in securing Jacob's blessing is a complex and pivotal part of the biblical narrative. It highlights the human element in the divine glory, where faith and ambition and family loyalty intersect with moral choices. Rebecca's action and their consequences offer deep insight into the nature of faith, the complexities of fulfilling divine promises, and the enduring impact of individual decisions within the broader framework of God's providential plan. Consequences of Jacob's Deception Introduction The Ripple Effect of Deception Jacob's deception in obtaining the blessing from Isaac acts in motion a series of events that profoundly impact his life. The narrative that follows in Genesis illustrates the far-reaching consequences of Jacob's action, marked by personal trial, exile, and journey towards self-realization. Fleeing from home and Esau's wrath the immediate consequence of Jacob's deception is the need to flee from his brother Esau, who is filled with anger and thought of revenge. Jacob's mother, Rebekah, advises him to escape to Aran, to her brother Laban's house, until Esau's anger subsides. This departure from his home signifies a significant shift in Jacob's life, from a relatively comfortable existence to one of uncertainty and exile. Hardship and servitude in Haran Jacob's time in Haran, under the roof of his uncle Laban, is marked by hardship and servitude. He works for Laban for many years, first for the hand of Rachel, whom he loves, and then for Leah, Laban's older daughter, whom he is deceived into marrying. The irony of Jacob the deceiver, being deceived himself, is not lost in the narrative. His experiences with Laban reflect a kind of poetic justice and are instrumental in shaping his character. Themes of Justice and Retribution The hardship Jacob faces can be seen as a form of retribution for his earlier deceitful action. 
the deceiver becomes the deceived, a twist that highlights the theme of justice and moral consequences in the biblical narrative. These experiences seem to mirror his action against Jacob and his father Isaac, suggesting a moral balance being restored. Personal Growth and Transformation Jacob's experiences in Haran are not just about hardship and retribution. They also represent a period of significant personal growth and transformation. Jacob matures from a cunning young man into a more complex and developed character. The challenges he faces, the conflicts with Laban, and his eventual wrestling with God all contribute to the transformation into a figure capable of leading a nation. Conclusion Understanding Jacob's Journey Jacob's journey, marked by the consequences of his deception, is a powerful narrative about the complexities of human action and divine providence. His story is a testament to the idea that personal trials can lead to growth and that moral actions often have far-reaching effects. Jacob's experiences underscore the theme of justice, redemption, and the shaping of character through adversity. In summary, this part of the patriarchal narrative offers rich insight into the complexities of family relationships, the weight of cultural and religious traditions, and the unfolding of God's plan through human actions, both flawed and faithful. The stories of Jacob and Esau and the subsequent chapters are foundational to understanding the continuation of the Abrahamic covenant and the shaping of Israel's destiny. Jacob in Exile, Genesis 28-30 to The Ladder and the Blessing, Genesis 28 Jacob's Dream at Bethel Jacob's journey into exile is marked by a profound spiritual encounter at Bethel. Here, in a dream, he sees a ladder reaching to heaven with angels ascending and descending, symbolizing a continuous connection between the divine and the earthly realm. This vision contrasts sharply with the Tower of Babel incident where human ambition sought to reach heaven. In Jacob's dream, the latter signified God's initiative to maintain a relationship with humanity, God's reassurance and renewal of covenant. In a dream, God reaffirmed his covenant with Abraham and Isaac, extending it to Jacob. His reassurance of God's presence and the protection is pivotal for Jacob is fleeing from his brother and stepping into an uncertain future. God promises the land to Jacob's descendant and reassures him that through his lineage, all families of the earth will be blessed. Jacob's response, worship and commitment. Upon awakening, Jacob's immediate response is one of worship and dedication. He anoints the stone he used as a pillow with oil setting it up as a pillar in Bethel, symbolizing the sanctity of the encounter and his commitment to God. Jacob's vow to give a tenth of all he receives back to God reflects his gratitude and recognition of God's providence. This act of setting up an altar and vowing a tenth prefigures the latter development of worship practices and tithing in Israelite religion. Jacob's life in Haran Genesis 29 to 30. Encounter with Laban and marriage to Leah and Rachel. Jacob's time in Haran under his uncle Laban's roof is characterized by personal challenges and growth. He falls in love with Rachel but is deceived by Laban into marrying Leah first. This irony echoes Jacob's earlier deception of Esau and Isaac. Jacob's subsequent marriage to Rachel after fulfilling Laban's condition of seven years of work, reflects his perseverance and commitment. Jacob's Children and Family Dynamics While in Haran, Jacob's family grew as he fathers children with Leah, Rachel, and their handmaidens. The birth of these children, who will become the ancestors of the twelve tribes of Israel, is integral to the fulfillment of God's promises of numerous descendants. The complex family dynamics, marked by rivalry and favoritism, mirrors Jacob's own family history and set the stage for future narrative. Jacob's prosperity and dealing with Laban. Jacob's time in Haran is not only a period of personal growth, 
but also of increasing material prosperity. Despite Laban's attempt to outwit him, Jacob prospered, demonstrating keen understanding and skill in animal husbandry. This prosperity is seen as a manifestation of the divine blessing, even in a foreign land and under challenging circumstances. Conclusion Jacob's exile as a period of transformation. Jacob's exile in Haran is a significant phase in the patriarchal narrative. It is a time of personal transformation, familial expansion, and material prosperity despite the challenges and deceptions faced. This period in Jacob's life underscores themes of divine providence, personal growth, and the continuation of the covenantal promise, setting the stage for his return to Canaan and for the fulfillment of God's promises. Jacob is Jacob in Genesis 29, 1-30. to Introduction, the Cycle of Deception The narrative of Genesis 29, 1-30 depicts a crucial phase in Jacob's life characterized by a cycle of deception. This part of Jacob's story serves as a reflection on the consequences of deceit, as Jacob, once the deceiver, becomes the deceived. Encounter with Laban, a familial deception. Upon arriving in Haran, Jacob meets his uncle Laban. This meeting set the stage for the series of events marked by deception and trickery. Jacob, who has previously deceived his father and Isaac to obtain Esau's blessing, now finds himself on the receiving end of deceit. The irony of this situation underscores the theme of poetic justice and the complexities of family dynamics. Jacob's love for Rachel and the seven-year agreement. Jacob's immediate attraction to Rachel, Laban's younger daughter, leads him to strike a deal with Laban. He agrees to work seven years for Laban in exchange for Rachel's hand in marriage. This agreement reflects Jacob's deep affection for Rachel and his willingness to serve a lengthy period to earn the right to marry her. The Wedding Deception, Marrying Leah The narrative takes a dramatic turn on the wedding night when Laban deceives Jacob by substituting Leah, his older daughter, for Rachel. Jacob, who had used disguise to deceive his own father, is now himself deceived under the cover of night. This deception highlights the theme of measure for measure in the biblical narrative, where one's action often returned in a similar form. Jacob's reaction and the additional seven years. Upon realizing the deception, Jacob confronts Laban, who justifies his action by citing local customs that dictates the older daughter must marry first. Despite his sense of betrayal, Jacob agrees to work another seven years for Rachel. This decision not only demonstrates Jacob's love and commitment, but also his acceptance of the consequences of his action. Growth of Jacob's Family This segment of the story also sets the foundation for the future tribes of Israel. Despite the initial deception, Jacob's marriage to Leah and Rachel, and later to their handmaids, leads to the birth of his twelve sons and a daughter. These children are central to the continuation of the Abrahamic covenant and the formation of the nation of Israel. Conclusion Reflections on Deception and Destiny The story of Jacob and Laban Genesis 29 is a narrative rich in themes of deception, justice, love, and the unfolding of divine plans. Jacob's experience with Laban reflects a turning point in his life where he confronts the consequences of his past actions and moves towards fulfilling his role in the larger covenantal story. This phase of Jacob's life underscores the complexity of human choices and divine providence in shaping one's destiny. Twelve Signs and Fulfillment of the Covenantal Promise Introduction The Expansion of Jacob's Lineage the narrative of the birth of Jacob's twelve sons is a central element in the biblical story, intricately linked to the fulfillment of God's covenant of promise to Abraham. This segment of Genesis not only recounts the origin of the twelve tribes of Israel, but also reflects the complex family dynamics and the divine providence at play in shaping the destiny of a nation. Leah's Fertility and Early Son Leah, Jacob's first wife, plays a significant role in the early expansion of Jacob's family. Despite being less loved compared to Rachel, Leah is initially more fertile and bears several sons to Jacob. 
Each son's birth is accompanied by Leah's hope for greater affection from Jacob, reflecting the personal struggles and desires within the family. The sons born to Leah include Reuben, Simeon, Levi, and Judah, among others. He is becoming the ancestor of the tribe of Israel. Rachel's barrenness and surrogacy. In contrast, Rachel, whom Jacob loves more, struggles with barrenness. Her inability to conceive leads to a significant decision, offering her maid Bilah as a surrogate. Bilah's children, Dan and Naphtali, are thus born into Jacob's lineage. This act of surrogacy, driven by Rachel's longing for children and her rivalry with Leah, reflects the intense emotional and relational dynamics within the family. Leah and Silpa, continuing the lineage. Leah, seeing Rachel's use of a surrogate, follows suit by offering her maid Silpa to Jacob. Silpa bears God and Asher, father contributing to the growth of Jacob's family. This period of childbearing highlights the competitive nature between Leah and Rachel, its striving to contribute to Jacob's lineage in fulfillment of the divine promise. The birth of Joseph and Benjamin. The narrative takes a joyful turn when God remembers Rachel and she gave birth to Joseph and later Benjamin. These births are pivotal. Joseph's life and experiences, in particular, will play a significant role in the future of Jacob's family and the entire nation of Israel. Rachel's eventual motherhood is a testament to God's faithfulness and timing. Conclusion The Foundation of the Future Tribes of Israel the story of the birth of Jacob's twelve sons is foundational to the establishment of the tribes of Israel. It is a narrative that interviews personal desires, family rivalries, and divine intervention. Its son's birth contributes to the fulfillment of God's covenantal promises of making Abraham's descendant a great nation. This story sets the stage for the future development in the history of Israel and the ongoing narrative of God's chosen people. Jacob wrestles with God at Peniel. Introduction A pivotal encounter in Jacob's life. The encounter at Peniel is a defining moment in the life of Jacob, marking a significant turning point in his spiritual journey. This event in Genesis is not only a physical confrontation, but also symbolizes the deeper spiritual and personal struggles of Jacob. Jacob's preparation for return to Canaan. As Jacob prepares to return to Canaan after years of living with Laban, he faces not only the prospect of reuniting with his brother Esau, but also the culmination of his own personal journey. This return is fraught with uncertainty and fear, particularly concerning Esau's potential reaction, setting the stage for a night of profound transformation. The wrestling at Peniel, a symbolic struggle. At Peniel, Jacob encounters a mysterious figure, often interpreted as God, or an angel, and engages in an all-night wrestling match. This struggle is intensely physical, but simultaneously represents Jacob's spiritual and internal battle. It symbolizes his struggle with his past actions, his fears, his aspirations, and his identity. The physicality of the wrestling mirrors the intensity of Jacob's spiritual quest for understanding blessing, and transformation. Jacob's prevailing and the transformation. Remarkably, Jacob prevails in this struggle, demonstrating his tenacity and determination. Despite being overpowered, he clings to his opponent, demanding a blessing. This act of holding on, even in the face of overwhelming challenge, is emblematic of Jacob's persistence in seeking God's favor and presence in his life. The name changed to Israel, a new identity. As a result of this encounter, Jacob's name is changed to Israel. This means one who wrestles with God. This renaming is highly significant, marking a transformation in Jacob's identity and character. It signifies a transition from his previous ways, epitomized by his earlier acts of deception, to a new phase of life characterized by a more direct and honest relationship with God. The name Israel becomes a symbol of not just Jacob's personal transformation, but also the identity of an entire nation. Conclusion 
Peniel is a testament to personal transformation. Jacob's experience with Peniel is a powerful testament to the potential for personal transformation through the direct encounter with the divine. It highlights the complexity of Jacob's character and his evolving relationship with God. This event is a turning point that sets the stage for Jacob's future action and the broader narrative of the Israelite people. It underscores the theme of struggle, both human and divine, as a pathway to growth and deeper understanding. Jacob Encounters Esau Introduction, The Anticipated Reunion As Jacob returns to his homeland, he prepares to face Esau, setting the stage for one of the most emotionally charged reunions in biblical narrative. This encounter is not just a meeting of two strange brothers, but a moment of profound reconciliation and the resolution of a long-standing family conflict. Preparing for Esau's reception Aware of the potential hostility from Esau, Jacob approached the meeting with a strategy aimed at pacifying his brother. He divides his entourage into separate groups, thinking it may help protect them in case of an attack. Additionally, Jacob sends in a series of gifts to Esau, consisting of herds and flocks as a gesture of goodwill and repentance. This approach reflects Jacob's apprehension and his desire to make amends for his past action. The Encounter A Moment of Tension and Relief The actual meeting between Jacob and Esau is a powerful narrative moment filled with tension and uncertainty. Jacob approaches Esau with a series of vows, an act of humility and respect. Contrary to Jacob's fears, Esau greets him with an embrace, a gesture of forgiveness and acceptance. This embrace signifies the dissolution of years of animosity and the beginning of a new chapter in their relationship. Esau's forgiveness and the emotional reconciliation. Esau's reaction to Jacob is a testament of his own character development. Despite having every reason to hold a grudge, Esau chose forgiveness displaying a generosity of spirit that mirrors Jacob's own transformation. The emotional reunion of the brothers after years of separation and tension marks a significant moment of healing and reconciliation. Jacob's persistence and changed character. Jacob's persistence that Esau accepts his gift reflects his changed character. These gifts are symbolic of Jacob's acknowledgement of Esau's rightful place and his own desire to make restitution. Furthermore, Jacob's concern for the well-being of his entourage and his careful approach to meeting Esau demonstrate a mature, responsible attitude, contrasting with the deceitful and self-serving behavior of his youth. Conclusion The Significance of the Reunion The reunion of Jacob and Esau goes beyond the resolution of a family dispute. It signifies the power of forgiveness, the possibility of change, and the restoration of broken relationships. This encounter illustrates how time, experience, and divine intervention can transform enmity into reconciliation. The story of Jacob and Esau's reunion is a profound lesson in humility, forgiveness, and enduring bonds of family. Rape and Revenge at Shechem Introduction, a tragic incident in Jacob's family. The incident at Shechem marks one of the most troubling and violent episodes in the Genesis narrative. The story involving Jacob's daughter Dina and Shechem, the prince of the city, raises profound questions about justice, vengeance, and the consequences of violence. The assault on Dina. The narrative begins with Dina, Jacob's daughter, visiting the women of the land. Shechem, the prince of the region, sees her and in an act of violence rapes her. This act is a severe violation, not just of Dina, but of the honor and dignity of Jacob's family. Despite Shechem's subsequent affection for Dina and his wish to marry her, the initial act of violence casts dark shadow over the ensuing events. Shechem's proposal and Jacob's son's deception. Following the assault, Shechem expresses desire to marry Dina, and his father Hamor approaches Jacob and his sons 
with a marriage proposal. Jacob's sons, particularly Simeon and Levi, responds with the, a deceptive plan. They agree to the marriage and proposes to every male in Sikkim community be circumcised ostensibly to integrate uh, the two communities. This demand for circumcision, a sacred rite of the Israelite community, is used to sit fully as a part of their plan for revenge. The Mashaker at Shechem The men of Shechem agrees to the condition of circumcision. However, while they were still weak and recovering, Simeon and Levi launches a brutal attack, killing all the males of the city, including Shechem and Hamor. They also plunder the city, taking women and children as captives. This act of vengeance, while motivated by the desire to avenge their sister's dishonor, escalates the violence and raises complex ethical questions. Themes of justice, revenge, and moral complexity. The Shechem incident is fraught with moral ambiguity. On the one hand, it reflects the desire for justice in response to a heinous crime against Dina. On the other hand, the extreme retaliation by Jacob's son involving deceit and massacre challenges traditional notions of justice and vengeance. This story presents a narrative where the lines between justice and revenge are blurred and the consequences of violent retribution are starkly portrayed. Conclusion Reflecting on the Shechem episode The Shechem episode is a critical part of Genesis narrative, offering insights into the complexities of justice, revenge, and the impact of violence. It illustrates how a single act of violence can lead to a cycle of retaliation and suffering, raising questions about the ethics of vengeance and the cause of retributive justice. This narrative invites readers to reflect on the moral dilemmas faced by individuals and communities. On Joseph, Genesis 35-50 Joseph's Court and Familial Discord Introduction, Favoritism and Its Consequences In the story of Joseph, the code given to him by his father Jacob stands as a potent symbol of favoritism and its ensuing consequences. This narrative segment in Genesis explores the dynamics of family relationships and the impact of parental preference. Jacob's Favoritism Towards Joseph Jacob's favoritism toward Joseph, born of his beloved wife Rachel in his old age, is manifested in a tangible form, a special robe with sleeves. This coat is more than just a garment. It is a symbol of distinction and preference. In the cultural context of the time, such a garment was typically reserved for those of higher status or special roles, making his bestowal upon Joseph a clear sign of Jacob's special affection for him. The coat is a symbol of familial discord. The coat quickly becomes a central symbol of discord within Jacob's family. To Joseph's brothers, the coat represents their father's unequal treatment and Joseph's elevated status in the family. This favoritism creates an environment of jealousy and resentment, straining the brother's relationship with Joseph. The code, therefore, is not just a gift, but a catalyst for deepening familial rifts. Joseph's Behavior and Sibling Rivalry Joseph's behavior, including his reporting of his brother's misdeeds to Jacob, further exacerbates attention. Joseph's action, whether seen as a youthful naivete or his sense of duty, contribute to the brother's growing animosity towards him. This animosity is compounded by Joseph's dream, which he shares with his family, predicting his rise to a position of authority over them. The multifaceted impact of the coat. The coat's impact is multifaceted. It signifies Jacob's love and hope for Joseph, but also inadvertently sows seeds of discord. For Joseph, it becomes a symbol of his dreams and future. It also a source of alienation from his brothers. For the brothers, it symbolizes the injustice and favoritism they feel in their family, fueling their resentment. Conclusion Understanding the Significance of Joseph's Cult 
The story of Joseph Scott is a vivid illustration of the complexities of family dynamics and the unintended consequence of favoritism. It highlights how symbols and actions within a family can have far-reaching emotional and relational impact. This narrative invites reflection on themes of love, jealousy, sibling rivalry, and the challenges of navigating family relationships. Joseph's Dream and Their Significance Introduction Dreams as Divine Revelation In the narrative of Joseph, his dreams hold a significant place, serving as divine revelation that foreshadows his future role and the dynamics of his relationship with his family. These dreams are not mere figments of imagination, but are laden with prophetic meaning and are instrumental in advancing the plot of the story. The Dream of the Sheaves Joseph's first dream features sheaves of wheat, where his sheaf stands upright while those of his brothers bow down to it. This dream is deeply symbolic, representing Joseph's future rise in a position of authority and prominence. When Joseph shares his dream with his brothers, he exacerbates the existing tension and jealousy within the family. The brothers interpret the dream as an indication of Joseph's perceived sense of superiority and his aspiration to rule over them. The Dream of the Celestial Bodies The second dream is even more audacious and encompasses not only his brothers but also his parents. In this dream, the sun, the moon, the eleven stars bow down to Joseph. This vision suggests that Joseph will hold a position of significant power and authority, not just over his brother, but also in the broader family context. The inclusion of celestial bodies, sun and the moon, symbolic of his parents, adding to the audacity of the dream and further inflaming his brother's resentment. The Impact of Joseph's Dream Joseph's dream by pivotal in escalating the narrative tension within the family. They serve as a catalyst for the subsequent action of his brothers, leading to Joseph's eventual sailing to slavery. The dreams also reflect the theme of divine providence, suggesting that despite the brothers' animosity and action, the greater plan is unfolding. Foreshadowing Future Events The dreams are prophetic, foreshadowing Joseph's future ascendancy to a position of power and influence in Egypt. They prefigure the events where the brother and eventually his entire family will come to rely on him for survival during the time of famine. In this sense, the dreams are not just personal vision, but are integral to the unfolding of God's plan for Joseph and the family. Conclusion The Role of Dreams in Joseph's Story Joseph's dreams are more than narrative devices. They are essential elements that set the course of his life and the lives of his family members. They illustrate how divine revelation can come in various forms and how they can significantly impact human lives and relationships. These dreams lay the groundwork for Joseph's journey from a favored son to a powerful leader, highlighting the interplay of divine guidance, human action, and destiny. Joseph sold into slavery. Introduction, a turning point in Joseph's life. The seed of Joseph into slavery by his brothers is a pivotal moment in the Genesis narrative, marking a dramatic shift in Jesus' life from a favored son in his father's house to a slave in a foreign land. This event is central to the unfolding of the broader story of Joseph and his role in the history of Israel. The Climax of Sibling Rivalry The decision to sell Joseph into slavery is the culmination of the growing animosity and jealousy among his brothers. The hatred fueled by Joseph's dreams and their father's favoritism reaches its peak in a plot driven by envy and anger. This act is not just a moment of sibling rivalry. It is a profound betrayal that changes the course of Joseph's life. Reuben's Intervention Reuben, the eldest brother, initially intervenes in the plot to kill Joseph, suggesting instead that he be thrown into a pit. This intervention is probably motivated by the sense of responsibility as the eldest, 
forbid the desire to save Joseph and return him to their father later. Reuben's plan, however, does not unfold as he intends, leading to father unintended consequences. The decision to sell Joseph. The brother's decision to sell Joseph to a caravan of Ishmaelites traveling to Egypt is a critical moment of decision. This act of selling their brother for 20 pieces of silver reflects the depth of their resentment and the extent of their moral decline. The decision to profit from their brother's plight adds another layer of gravity to their betrayal. The transition from favored son to slave. Joseph's journey from being the favored son of Jacob to a slave in Egypt is a dramatic and rapid descent. This transition is a significant moment in the biblical story, showcasing the unpredictability of life and the profound impact of human actions. Joseph's slavery in Egypt sets the stage for his eventual rise to power and the fulfillment of the dreams he had as a youth. Conclusion The Significance of Joseph's Sale into Slavery The sale of Joseph into slavery is a pivotal event with far-reaching implications, both for Joseph and the history of Israel. It highlights themes of betrayal, providence, and the resilience of the human spirit. This narrative serves as a reminder of how individual actions can have significant consequences and how, in the biblical perspective, even the darkest moments can be woven into a larger divine plan. Judah and Joseph, two brothers contrasted. Genesis 38 to 39. Introduction, divergent path of two brothers. The narrative of Judah and Joseph in Genesis 38 to 39 presents starting contrast between two brothers whose path diverged significantly these chapters not only progress the story of Jacob's family, but also delve into themes of responsibility, integrity, and divine providence through the contrasting experiences of Judah and Joseph. Judah's Narrative, Failure and Redemption In Genesis 38, Judah's story is marked by personal tragedy and moral failure. The death of his son and his obligation under the Leverett marriage law set the stage for the encounter with Tamar, his daughter-in-law. Judah fails to fulfill his duty to Tamar by not giving her his youngest son in marriage, as per the liberate custom. Tamar's subsequent deception, posing as a prostitute to conceive a child by Judah, exposes his hypocrisy. When Judah realizes his wrongdoing in not honoring his con commitment to Tamar, it leads to a moment of self-realization and repentance. This narrative highlights the theme of responsibility and consequences of unfulfilled duties and the potential for moral awakening and redemption. Joseph's Story, Integrity and Trial In contrast, Genesis 39 shifts focus to Joseph, who despite being sold into slavery, finds favor with God and Potiphar, an officer of Pharaoh. Joseph's time in Potiphar's household tests his character in a different way. When faced with the advances of Potiphar's wife, Joseph demonstrates remarkable integrity by refusing to succumb to temptation. Joseph's adherence to his principles, however, leads to his unjust imprisonment after being falsely accused by Potiphar's wife. This turn of events underscores the theme of maintaining integrity in the face of adversity and the injustices that can result from it. Despite the wrongful accusation, Joseph continues to experience God's favor, even within the confines of prison. The contrast between Judah and Joseph. By juxtaposition of Judah and Joseph's story in these chapters provide a compelling study in contrast, where Joseph initially shirks his responsibility and later faces up to his moral failures, Joseph consistently exhibits integrity and righteousness, only to face unjust consequences. These narratives explore the complexities of human character and the unpredictable nature of life's trials and tribulation. Conclusion Reflection on Responsibility and Integrity 
The contrasting stories of Judah and Joseph offers profound insight into the themes of responsibility, integrity, and divine providence. Judah's journey from failure to repentance and Joseph's steadfastness in the face of trial highlight the varied ways in which individuals respond to moral challenges. These narratives contribute to the rich tapestry of the Genesis account, illustrating the complexities of human behavior and the overarching presence of divine guidance. Joseph in Prison, Genesis 39 to 41. Introduction Joseph's Continual Faith in Adversity. The narrative of Joseph in Prison, as described in Genesis 39 to 41, is a statement of his resilience, faith, and the unfolding of his unique gifts under challenging circumstances. This segment of the story highlights how Joseph's character and abilities come to play a pivotal role even in the depth of imprisonment. Joseph's time in prison, a display of character and gift. In prison, Joseph's integrity and talents quickly become evident despite the injustices of his imprisonment. Joseph maintains his faith and character, earning the respect of the prison warden. This spirit in Joseph's life is marked not by despair, but by the demonstration of his steadfastness and the development of his gifts in interpreting dreams. The Dreams of the Cupbearer and the Baker Joseph's ability to interpret dreams is first showed within the prison walls when he encounters Pharaoh's cupbearer and baker both of whom have troubling dreams. Joseph interprets the dreams with remarkable accuracy, predicting the restoration of the cup barrier to his position and the unfortunate execution of the baker. These interpretations, which soon came to pass, confirm Joseph's prophetic gift, but also highlights a recurring theme of dreams as a means of divine communication. The cup bearer's forgetfulness. Despite Joseph's request to the cupbearer to remember him and mention his case to Pharaoh, Joseph remains forgotten in prison. This forgetfulness is another trial in Joseph's life, testing his patience and faith. It serves to extend his time in prison, but also sets the stage for a more significant role that Joseph is yet to play. Interpretation of Pharaoh's Dream The turning point comes when Pharaoh himself is troubled by enigmatic dreams. Remembering Joseph's skill, the cupbearer finally mentions him to Pharaoh. Joseph is brought before Pharaoh to interpret his dreams about seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine. Joseph's interpretation is about subsequent advice on how to manage the impending famine demonstrate not only his gift of prophecy, but also his practical wisdom and foresight. Joseph rise to power. The accuracy of Joseph's interpretation and its practical solution to the impending crisis impressed Pharaoh, leading to Joseph's elevation from prisoner to a position of high authority in Egypt. This rise to power is a dramatic reversal of fortune and a fulfillment of the earlier dream Joseph had as a youth. Conclusion Divine Providence in Joseph's Journey Joseph's journey from favored son to prisoner and then to the ruler of Egypt is a powerful illustration of divine providence working through personal trials. His time in prison, marked by the development and recognition of his gift, is a crucial phase that prepares him for the significant role he has to play in Egypt and in the lives of his own family. Joseph's story in prison highlights theme of perseverance, divine guidance, and the transformation of adversity into opportunity. Joseph set over the land of Egypt, Genesis 41 and following. Introduction A Remarkable Ascension Joseph's ascension to a position of immense power in Egypt, as recounted in Genesis 41 and subsequent chapters, is one of the most striking turnarounds in the biblical narrative. The section of the story encapsulates themes of divine providence, personal redemption, and the intricate unfolding of God's plan. Pharaoh's Recognition of Joseph's Wisdom The catalyst for Joseph's rise is his interpretation of Pharaoh's dreams. Joseph not only accurately interprets the dreams as foretelling seven years of plenty, followed by seven years of famine, 
but also offers practical advice on how to prepare for the coming years. His insight and wisdom impressed Pharaoh, who recognized not only Joseph's intelligence, but also the divine favor upon him. Appointment as Overseer of Egypt Pharaoh appoints Joseph as the overseer of the land's resources, entrusting him with the authority to implement his plan for the impending famine. This appointment marks a dramatic shift in Joseph's status, elevating him from a foreign prisoner to the second most powerful man in Egypt. Joseph's role involves storing surplus grain during the years of plenty and distributing it during the famine, showcasing his administrative and leadership skills. Joseph's Management and the Famine Years Joseph's management of Egypt's resources during the years of plenty and famine demonstrates his exceptional administrative abilities and foresight. His strategic planning and execution ensures not only the survival of Egypt, but also the neighboring regions, including Canaan, where his family resides. This period of famine eventually leads to the reunion of Joseph with his brothers, bringing the narrative full circle. Themes of Providence and Redemption Joseph's journey from favored son to the ruler in Egypt is a powerful illustration of divine providence and personal redemption. His story shows that even in the depth of betrayal and suffering, there can be a greater plan at work. Joseph's life is a testament of, to the idea that the hardship and adversity can be transformative and can lead to unforeseen opportunities and positions of influence. Conclusion The Fulfillment of God's Plan Joseph's elevation to a position of authority in Egypt is not just a personal success story. It is integral to the fulfillment of God's promises to Abraham's lineage. It underscores the biblical theme of God working through human history and using even adverse circumstances to achieve His purposes. Joseph's story is a vivid example of how resilience, faith, and wisdom can lead to significant roles in the unfolding of divine plan. On Joseph and his brothers, Genesis 42-45 to Famine and Testing Introduction, a pivotal moment in Joseph's narrative. The set of the seven-year famine is foretold by Joseph marks a critical juncture in the biblical narrative of the of Genesis. This period not only tests the resilience and resourcefulness of the region, but also sets the stage for a dramatic and emotional reunion between Joseph and his family. Joseph's role in managing the famine. As the overseer of Egypt's resources, Joseph is at the forefront of managing the famine. His foresight in storing grain during the years of plenty allowed Egypt to withstand the harsh years of famine. Joseph's responsibility extends to distributing gain to the Egyptians and to foreigners who come to Egypt seeking relief, demonstrating its administrative acumen and compassion. The Brothers' Journey to Egypt Jacob, aware of the grain stores in Egypt, sends his son excluding Benjamin to buy food. This journey is fraught with uncertainty and desperation as the famine affects not just Egypt but also their homeland in Canaan. The brothers, unaware that they are about to encounter Joseph, embarks on a trip that will change their lives. Joseph encounter with his brothers. When Joseph's brothers arrive in Egypt, they do not recognize him, but Joseph immediately identifies them. This moment is laden with emotion and significance for Joseph. He sees an opportunity to test his brothers' characters and to see if they have changed since the day they sold him into slavery. The Accusation and the Test Joseph approached his brothers in strategic and testing. He accused them of being spies, a child that they vehemently denied. In their defense, they revealed details about their family, including the existence of their younger brother, Benjamin. Joseph's accusation and the brothers' defense set in motion a series of events that heightens the narrative's tension. The Return of the Money and the Demand for Benjamin in a father text, Joseph secretly returns the money to his brothers just to pay for the grain, placing it in their sacks. When they discover the money, they are dismayed and fearful. 
seeing it as a sign of divine retribution for their past misdeeds. The tension escalates when Joseph demands that uh, Benjamin be brought to Egypt as proof of their honesty, a condition that causes great anxiety and distress for Jacob and his remaining sons. Conclusion Testing, Reunion, and Redemption The famine and the brothers journey to Egypt for grain serve as a catalyst for a series of events that lead to one of the most poignant reunions in the Bible. Joseph's strategic testing of his brother's character and the eventual revelation of his identity are not just dramatic plot elements. They underscore themes of redemption, forgiveness, and intricate workings of divine providence. Judah Steps Up Introduction A Transformation in Leadership The narrative involves Judah in Genesis marks a crucial turning point in the Joseph story. Judah's action and speech before Joseph demonstrate a significant transformation in his character and leadership within his family. The Framing of Benjamin The plot thickens when Joseph, still unrecognized by his brothers, orchestrates a situation to test them further. He plants a silver cup in Benjamin's sack, then accuses him of theft. This act by Joseph puts Benjamin, the youngest and now the most beloved son of Jacob, in grave danger. The situation echoes the earlier plight of Joseph himself, creating a tense and precarious scenario. Judah's emergence as a leader and mediator. In this critical moment, Judah steps forward as leader and mediator. He has previously assured Jacob of Benjamin's safety. And now faced with a dire situation, Judah takes responsibility. His approach to Joseph, marked by humility and earnestness, contrasts sharply with his previous action when Joseph was sold into slavery. The impassioned plea for Benjamin Judah's plea on behalf of Benjamin is not just a bid to save his brother, but also a reflection of his concern for their father, Jacob. He explains the devastating impact that losing Benjamin would have on Jacob, considering the old man's deep love for his youngest son. This plea signifies Judah's growth in empathy and responsibility, showing a profound understanding of the consequences of their actions on others. The Chains in Judah This episode represents a significant evolution in Judah's character. From being a party to the sale of Joseph, Judah emerges as a figure of compassion and responsibility. His willingness to offer himself as a substitute for Benjamin to ensure the young man's safe return to their father marks a complete turnaround from his earlier self-centeredness. Joseph's Revelation and Familial Reconciliation Moved by Judah's plea, Joseph reveals his true identity to his brothers in a dramatic and emotional climax. This revelation, facilitated by Judah's transformation and intervention, opens the door to forgiveness and reconciliation within the family. It is a moment of profound emotional release, symbolizing the healing of deep wounds and the restoration of familial bonds. Conclusion Judah's Role in the Redemption Narrative Judah's actions in this segment of Genesis are pivotal in the narrative of Joseph and his brothers. It highlights the theme of redemption and the potential for personal transformation. Judas emerges as a mediator and his heartfelt advocacy for Benjamin paved the way for the family's reconciliation and play a critical role in unfolding of the larger redemption story of Joseph and his family. Resolution and Reconciliation Introduction The Culmination of a Familial Saga the conclusion of the Joseph narrative in Genesis marks a significant moment of resolution and reconciliation. This segment sees the healing of deep familial wounds and the beginning of a new chapter for Jacob's family, while also introducing elements that foreshadow future developments in the biblical story. The reunion of Joseph with his brothers. The emotional reunion of Joseph with his brothers is a pivotal moment in the narrative. After years of separation, misunderstandings, and grief, the brothers come face to face with Joseph, now a powerful figure in Egypt. This reunion is marked by forgiveness and understanding as Joseph acknowledges the divine purpose behind his ordeals and his brother's actions. The Invitation to Settle in Egypt 
Following the reunion, Joseph extends an invitation to Jacob and his entire family to settle in Egypt. He selects the land of Goshen as their dwelling place, a fertile region suitable for their pastoral lifestyle. This invitation to subsequent migration are significant as they ensure the survival of Jacob's family during the severe famine affecting the region. The choice of Goshen. Joseph's choice of Goshen for his family is strategic, ensuring they can live comfortably and remain close to him. Goshen offers the family a place of refuge and prosperity, providing a stable environment for the growth and the development that will become the nation of Israel. The contrast with the promise of Canaan. While the settlement in Egypt provides immediate relief and security, it also introduces a new tension in the biblical narrative. The feminist residence in Egypt in contrast to the divine promise of the land of Canaan. This juxtaposition sets the stage for future developments in the story of Israel, particularly the eventual exodus from Egypt and the return to the promised land. The interplay between divine providence and human action. The resolution of the Joseph story highlights the complex relationship between divine providence and human action. The narrative suggests that while human decisions and actions play a critical role, they unfold within the broader framework of God's plan and purposes. The journey of Joseph and his family to Egypt, though initially seeming like a detour, is part of the divine plan for the nation of Israel. Conclusion A Story of Redemption and Divine Purpose The conclusion of the Joseph narrative is a powerful story of redemption, reconciliation, and the unfolding of divine purposes. It portrays a transformation of personal and familial adversity into the larger story of survival, growth, and fulfillment of God's promises. This resolution sets the stage for the new phase in the history of Israel, continuing the overarching biblical theme of a people chosen and guided by God. The critical episode in Genesis chapters 42 to 45 focused on the themes of testing, reconciliation, and the unfolding of God's plan through the lives of Joseph and his brothers. It emphasizes the transformation of relationship and character, particularly highlighting the journey from betrayal and estrangement to forgiveness and unity. On Jacob's family moving to Egypt and the passing down of the blessing, Genesis 47 to 50. Jacob's family moves to Egypt. Introduction a pivotal transition in the biblical narrative. And the relocation of Jacob's family to Egypt marked a critical juncture in the biblical story. This move, motivated by the severe famine and the revelation of Joseph's high status in Egypt, sets in motion a series of events that significantly shaped the history of the Israelites. The Journey to Egypt the journey of Jacob and his family to Egypt is a momentous decision influenced by the need for survival during a time of famine. The discovery that Joseph, whom Jacob had long mourned as dead, is not only alive but also the person of great authority in Egypt adds a profound emotional dimension to this relocation. The journey is filled with a mix of apprehension and hope as the family leaves the land promised to them by God to seek sustenance in a foreign land. The beginning of the 400 years period. Unbeknownst to Jacob and his family at the time their move to Egypt would lead to a 400 year period of residency which would eventually transform into oppression. This period in Egypt begins as a time of refuge and prosperity in the land of Goshen but gradually evolves into a situation of enslavement and hardship. This transition fulfills the prophecy given to Abraham about his descendants being strangers in a land not their own. The Bridge Between the Patriarchs and the Exodus The relocation to Egypt serves as a narrative bridge between the story of the patriarchs and the subsequent enslavement and exodus of the Israelite people. It is a pivotal shift in the biblical narrative where the focus moves from the stories of individual patriarchs to the formation and development of a nation. The fulfillment of divine promises and prophecies. While the move to Egypt might seem to deviate from the divine promise of the land of Canaan, it is in fact part of the fulfillment of God's covenant with Abraham. 
The experience in Egypt, both the years of prosperity and the subsequent period of oppression, are integral to the shaping of Israelites' identity and their reliance on God for deliverance. Introduction of the New Challenges and Themes The relocation introduced new challenges and themes for the Israelite people. It marked the beginning of a period of significant transformation where the children of Israel grow from a large family to a populous nation. Their experiences in Egypt, including their eventual enslavement, set the stage for the theme of liberation, law, and covenant that will dominate the subsequent chapters of their history. Conclusion a Significant Shift in Biblical Story The move of Jacob's family to Egypt is more than a physical relocation. It represents a significant shift in the biblical narrative. This event sets the stage for the fulfillment of divine promises and prophecies and introduces new chapter in the story of God's chosen people marked by both prosperity and adversity. The Blessing Passed Down Introduction Shifting Dynamics in the Patriarchal Blessing The transmission of the patriarchal blessing in Jacob's family represents a significant moment in the biblical narrative highlighting the dynamics of succession and the role of divine orchestration in the Abrahamic Covenant. This segment explores how the traditional pattern of inheritance is altered in Jacob's family. The traditional primogenitor appended. In ancient Near Eastern culture, the firstborn son typically received the birthright and the main blessing, entitling him to a leadership role and a double portion of the inheritance. However, in Jacob's family, this pattern is disrupted due to the actions and character of his eldest sons. Reuben's for feature of the birthright. Reuben, Jacob's first, born for the right to the primary blessing and birthright due to his serious transgression, sleeping with his father's concubine, Bilha. This act of disrespect and violation is seen as a grave misdeed, disqualifying him from assuming the leadership role traditionally reserved for the firstborn. The exclusion of Simeon and Levi. Similarly, Simeon and Levi, Jacob's second and third son, are passed over for the blessing. Their violent retribution against the men of Shechem following the rape of their sister Dina is viewed as excessive and cruel, reflecting a temperament unsuitable for leadership. Their actions contribute to their exclusion from receiving the primary patriarchal blessing. The Rise of Judah. As a result of the older brother's action, the birthright and blessing passed to Judah, the fourth son. Judah's ascendancy is not only a consequence of his brother's missteps, but also part of divine design. The narrative emphasizes Judah's developing character and leadership qualities, setting him apart from his brothers. Judah's lineage in his biblical significance. The shift of the blessing to Judah is significant within the larger biblical narrative. Judah's lineage is destined to hold a place of prominence, with the tribe of Judah becoming a leading tribe in Israel. This lineage is particularly notable as it is through Judah's line that King David and later Jesus Christ are born, according to biblical genealogy. Conclusion Divine Orchestration in the Patriarchal Blessing The alteration of the line of succession in the Patriarchal Blessing in Jacob's family highlights the complex interplay between human action and divine orchestration. It illustrates how the individual choices, character flaws, and strength can influence the flow of biblical history. This narrative segment underscores the theme of divine sovereignty in guiding the covenantal promises through generation, often in unexpected ways. Conclusion The End of the Era of the Patriarchs the story of Genesis concludes with the end of the patriarchal era, marked by the death of the founding fathers, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, and the establishment of their descendants in Egypt. The narrative emphasizes the continuity of God's blessing through the generation. The Israelites, despite their impending hardship in Egypt, grow in number and strength, fulfilling God's promise to Abraham of making his descendants as numerous as the stars. This conclusion serves as both the end and the beginning. It concludes with the story of the individual patriarchs 
when setting the stage for the collective narrative of the Israelites' people leading to the story of the Exodus. It encapsulates themes of faith, promise, and divine providence serving as a testament to the enduring nature of God's covenant with His chosen people. Thank you for joining us in this journey through the fascinating narratives of Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. We hope you enjoy delving into the complexities of the patriarchs and the profound lessons their stories offer. Remember, the lives of these patriarchs are more than just historical accounts. They are rich with themes of faith, transformation, and divine providence, reflecting the intricate ways God works through human history. If you found this episode insightful, please like, share, and subscribe to our channel. Don't forget to hit the bell icon so you can never miss an update. Stay tuned for our next episode where we will dive into Egypt and Exodus introduction. We'll explore the transition from slaves to a chosen nation and how worship and service were central to their calling. Until next time, may you continue to find inspiration and wisdom in this timeless story. Thank you for watching.